In this video, we will look at alkenes, specifically ranking the stability of alkenes and determining E and Z nomenclature and cis and trans nomenclature for particular alkenes. So first, let's quickly review what an alkene is. Alkene is a generic name for any molecule that has at least one carbon-carbon double bond in it. It can have more than one carbon-carbon double bond, but it cannot have only carbon-carbon single bonds, or if it has carbon-carbon triple bond, then that is no longer an alkene, it becomes something else. So, and remember, in our nomenclature, the alk is just a prefix holder for the number of carbons, so it can be replaced with like meth, eth, prop, etc. So a three-carbon alkene would be propene, for example. So, that is what an alkene is. Now we'll talk about the relative stability of alkenes. The most stable alkene is the one that is substituted the most. So we'll look through specific examples of what substitution is, but in short, it is simply when a hydrogen is replaced with something else in the alkene, then that is considered substituted. So it's when you substitute the hydrogen of a normal alkene with something else like a methyl group or a chlorine, etc., that would all be considered substituted, making that alkene more stable. Okay, next we have cis and trans. Cis and trans is a nomenclature to distinguish between geometric isomers, which is a specific class of stereoisomers that will be best explained with a specific examples. But the main point here is that this cis and trans nomenclature only applies to very basic uh, alkenes, ones that are substituted with the same types of group. So I will, again, illustrate this with an example, but just remember at this point that cis and trans is the relatively restrictive nomenclature for alkenes. It is only applicable in certain situations and cert for certain molecules. And then lastly, we have our E and Z nomenclature. This is very similar to cis and trans, except it applies to all alkenes, and it was invented because the cis and trans nomenclature is only consistent with some of the more simple molecules that have the same types of substitution patterns. So E and Z applies to any number of substitution, so you could use E and Z exclusively, but cis and trans you may see in certain situations because it applies to those basic compounds, so you need to understand both and how to apply both in the, in the situations which they apply and which they don't. All right, we'll jump right into a specific example. So first we'll do problems related to the stability of an alkene. So the question is determine the most stable alkene in the following list. So as we recall from the introduction that the most stable alkene is the one that is the most substituted. So here, remember, when I say substitution, I mean when the hydrogen of the standard alkene is replaced with something that's not a hydrogen, like these methyl groups here. So what I mean is if we consider just ethene, which is this molecule here, this would be the least substituted because it has hydrogens attached to all of the carbon-carbon double bonds. So we have the carbon-carbon double bond, and then all the other bonds to those carbons are simply hydrogens. So if we compare that to this molecule, for example, we have a methyl group instead of a hydrogen and a methyl group instead of a hydrogen. So this, I'm drawing in the other hydrogens that aren't shown. So this is substituted by two groups. So this is relatively stable compared to one that was substituted with one or zero, like ethene. Now, if we look here, this is also substituted by two groups, two methyl groups. But notice that the methyl groups are on the same side of the double bond, and here they are on opposite sides because this methyl group is going up relative to the double bond. This is going down relative to the double bond. So those are opposite sides. These are the same side. This is something that we'll get into in a little bit, but this will affect the relative stability of these, these alkenes. Next, we look at this molecule. This is substituted by three methyl groups. So this is even more stable than both of these because it has three substitutions. And lastly, this one is fully substituted with methyl groups where all the hydrogens would be. So right away then we can know this is the most substituted. So therefore it is also the most stable. And as far as this question is concerned, we would be finished because the question is simply asking for the most stable alkene in the list. 
All right, here we have another question relating to alkene stability. So it's the exact same question, determine the most stable alkene in the following list. So here's our list of four molecules. There are cycloalkenes in this case. So if we're looking at this molecule first, again, it's all about the substitution. So we see that there are two hydrogens at this alkene on this side, and then two substitutions on this carbon in the alkene. So this is disubstituted or substituted by two groups. Here, this is tri-substituted because we see the addition of the methyl group here. So we have, looking at our alkene, we have one substitution at this carbon, two substitutions at this carbon, and then therefore this one hydrogen, this is tri-substituted. This one is disubstituted. If we look at this one, we see that this is tetra-substituted because if we look at this carbon, it's bound to one, two carbons, and this one's bound to one, two other carbons. So no hydrogens there, that's tetra-substituted. And if we look at this one, we see that this is disubstituted as well because here's the presence of these two hydrogens. It's only exchanged with those two groups. So therefore, this molecule here is our most substituted and therefore the most stable. In these examples, we will look at cis and trans and E and Z isomerism. So, like I mentioned in the introduction, cis and trans applies to these simple compounds. And what I mean is when the substitution is the exact same. So, for this, this compound A, we see that it, the carbon on both sides is substituted by a methyl group and a methyl group. And then, therefore, we have a hydrogen and a hydrogen. So... Because of that, these are substituted by the exact same thing, so we can use cis and trans. E and Z is also correct, but cis and trans is more common for a molecule like this. So now, how do we determine cis and trans? Well, cis is same side of the double bond, and trans is opposite. Okay, so... Now we need to look at our molecule and decide what is, what are we comparing when we talk about same side, opposite side. So what we're comparing are the substituents. And this is why cis and trans works in this way for these more simple molecules, because it doesn't matter which uh, group that you compare. As long as you're comparing the exact same group, you'll be able to determine cis or trans. So let's start with the methyl groups. So if we look at just this side, we ignore the other side of the molecule for now. We see that we have our methyl group and that is oriented up relative to the double bond. Now, if we ignore this side, we'll see that our methyl group here is, relative, is oriented down relative to the double bond. So then when we uncover now, we see that we have one going up, one going down, that's opposite. So in fact, this A molecule, this is trans. Okay. Now, if we do the same thing here on B, we see that cis and trans doesn't work because we have methyl group, methyl group on one side and a methyl group on the other and a hydrogen. So they're not substituted in the same way that this molecule is. So in fact, if we try to compare the priority on the left side, we see that it's a methyl group and a methyl group. Those are the same. This is just like chirality. We cannot distinguish between these in terms of priority. So therefore, it, it is the exact same, and we cannot say that it's cis or trans, because if we interchange these methyl groups, it would not change the molecule at all. So it doesn't matter how this is oriented, because we have the same groups. So because we have the same substitution on one carbon, so the same group, in other words, it is neither cis nor trans. So the most complete way to say this, it is not a geometric isomer. Or you can say stereoisomer. A geometric isomer is a very specific stereoisomer. All right, here we have another example of cis and trans or ENZ. So as I mentioned in our first two problems, cis and trans only works if we have the exact same types of substitutions. So here we see that we have an ethyl group in an ethyl group, so that is the same, but our chlorine and our CH3 are not the same. So because of that, this is all substituted, this isn't substituted identically in the sense that we have like a hydrogen and a hydrogen and then a methyl and a methyl, for example. This is not like that. 
because the hydrogen and hydrogen aren't the same. Like it's our chlorine and our methyl group. Those are not the same. So therefore this cannot be cis or trans. We can't use cis trans. So what we have to use is E or Z. So now a brief aside on E and Z, E and Z are just cis and trans equivalents for these complicated molecules. So E is trans-like, and Z is cis-like. And it's easy to remember because if you think of Z as cis, like Z-I-S, then you can remember that it is the cis-like version. So now we have to use the same rules that we used in chirality, the con engel prelog rules, to determine priority. So we have to compare what the priority of the substituents on either side of the carbon. So let me redraw this molecule so we can assess this without the clutter. Okay, so if we look at our left side first, let's ignore, or let's ignore the left side first, let's look at the right side. So we have an ethyl group and a CH3. So we're comparing this carbon bound to another carbon versus this carbon bound to just hydrogens. So just like in our con ingold prelog rules, we would say that this is the highest priority because it has that additional substitution, that additional presence of the carbon. So this is our highest priority. It is, rel it is oriented up relative to the double bond. So we draw an arrow up and we ignore the right side at this point. So we can cover that up. Look at the left side. We have a chlorine and then an ethyl group. So we're comparing our carbon to our chlorine. Chlorine has the highest atomic number, higher mass. So it is therefore the priority. And it is also oriented up relative to the double bond. So this is cis-like because both are pointed in the same direction. So this is a Z geometric isomer. So the reason this is a good example is because if you were to just compare the groups that are the same, which is the ethyl groups, you would say that this is trans or then um, E because of the way that the ethyl groups are oriented. But we can't do that since this isn't substituted identically. So if we had another chlorine here, for example, where the methyl group is, then you could use cis and trans. But without that, you must use this E and Z notation and pay very close attention to con Engel prelog rules to distinguish what has priority where, and then look at how it's oriented. Okay, so one more example of this type. We have a, another alkene, and again, we can't use cis or trans because none of the substituents in this case are the same. So we then have to determine priority. So let's look at the right side first. So we have a carbon bound twice to oxygen and once to another oxygen, and then a carbon bound twice to oxygen in a double bond and a hydrogen. So using our con engel prelog rules, we would say that this carboxyl, carboxylic acid group is the highest priority among these two, and it is oriented up relative to the double bond. Then if we look at this side, we have a carbon bound to an oxygen, bound to a methyl group. So the oxygen has the higher priority because it has the higher atomic number. So this is rel oriented up relative to the double bond. And then if we compare the two, this is cis-like, which means it is the Z geometric isomer. Here we have a few more examples looking at our E and Z cis and trans. So here we have a molecule cycloalkene, and we have to then distinguish if, if it can be cis or trans or E or Z. So it can't be cis or trans because we don't have the exact same substitutions like we have in other in our other cases that I've shown in the previous examples. So this has to be E or Z, and we need to distinguish the priority. So if we look at this top carbon here, so a block down here, we see that we have a methyl group and then a carbon bound to another carbon. So this is the highest priority there to the left. It's oriented to the left relative to the double bond. And the double bond is vertical on this case. So that's why it's left and right instead of up and down like the previous examples. And then if we block here, we see that this one also just has a hydrogen here. So this is also oriented to the left. So this is cis-like as well. So this must be Z. Okay, and our last example here for this video is the most complicated one. So if we look at this alkene, again, 
we know it can't be cis or trans because the substitutions are all different, and now we have to compare the substitutions. So if we look at the right side, we see that we have a carbon bound to a chlorine, chlorine bound to a methyl group, and then a, this the carbon of interest is bound to a oxygen directly. So this is the higher priority. Even though there is a chlorine in this substituent, it's always the first point of difference. So the first difference is we have a carbon compared to an oxygen. Oxygen has a higher atomic number, higher mass, so it is the higher priority, and it is oriented down relative to the double bond. Now if we look over here, we have our carbon of interest bound to the, a bromine, and then it's the other substituent is a carbon bound to an oxygen and another oxygen. So this bromine is oriented up relative to the double bond. So then we uncover and we compare we have up and down in our highest priorities. That is trans-like. So this is E. This is the E geometric isomer. So that is all I have for this video. I hope you learned something and benefited from it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have a topic idea you'd like me to cover or any specific questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will get to it as soon as I can. So have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.